Hi there, welcome back to my channel, Scrub and Coffee. Uh, we are going slowly but steady through the decorating process of our land down under folio. Um, we have in the first two videos been constructing um, and in the last video we have been starting on our decorating. We've been working on our waterfall element. We still need to finish up quite a lot in here, but at first I want to worry about other parts because I can easily use scrap pieces and all sorts of stuff to go there. So I want to worry about this part right now. And going through my papers, I decided that this would be a nice option. I had that in my head for this side as well, but I couldn't make that work as, um, with the closure here as nicely as I wanted to, but I do think or do feel that it will be a good option uh, right here to cover that up and to not have too much going on on our small pockets right there so this is what it's going to be I'm going to use the corner here with the, I want to say mouse I know it's not a mouse and I need to be educated on all these uh, names <laughs> but um, I've learned a few I've learned a few but look, of course the koala of course the kangaroo I know a little bit about the differences between a kangaroo and a wallaby. I know that there is a wombat. I know there is a... <laughs> I've seen this one in the Melbourne Zoo, but I forgot the name. Uh, what is it? A possum? Is this, this an emu? I believe. I've seen them in the Werribee Zoo. But anyway, uh, this flap is eight and a quarter. This should also be eight and a quarter from edge to edge. Um, so let's cut our paper to eight inches. And I need to uh, organize that. I'm not so well prepared. I basically just went from filming the previous video to this one. And then I will measure my flap. Which is four and three quarters. So I'm going to go to four and a half. Double check. Yes. Okay, so now I can just, I could just say I'm going to cut off the parts for my pockets right here, but I have about a quarter inch gap. So I'm going to cut off a quarter inch here. And my paper trimmer is again cutting a little bit rough. Let me cut this down. So right here is where it's continuous with the pattern. I'm going to cut off a quarter inch. Maybe even a little hair over a quarter inch, not too much. I'm not sure if I will be using this on something, but I never throw it away until I'm done. And now I can cut the height of my pockets that I need. So these pockets are one and a quarter. And again, because it's so small, I will probably cut it to one and one eighth of an inch instead of and uh, going for that one eight inch border so this is one and, and it might be a little under one and one eight of an inch but i hope i'm doing this right because there are no second chances <laughs> okay that looks that looks good let me get this out of the way so this is the scrap piece that I have left over. I might use that on the inside of the flap, I'm not sure. And then I can just stick this down as one whole piece. You can do that. Um, but in this case, I think I want to show the, the actual pocket. So my pockets are, and I need to measure this one, two and three quarters. This one is a little smaller in my case, because if you have seen the construction video, I didn't end up really nice there. My pockets are not... It's not my best work, but um, that is okay. But I'm going to measure from this side. So here I have two and five eighths. So I'm going to cut it to two and a half from this side, two and a half inches in. And then the other ones need to be two and five eighths. Yes, because they, they are two and three quarters. So. It, I have a little piece of detail there, so I need to make sure that I got it right. 
two and a half and then the other one is basically white we can add something fun to it it doesn't matter so then we would have this right there we could change that to a pattern if we want to but i think i just i like this that looks pretty okay to me i'm uh <laughs> made up my mind that i'm not going to be in too much doubt in decision making i was also thinking maybe i can do another strip of that wood grain but i can also do the wood grain uh, on this layer of pockets here to have that come back a little bit it's also an option maybe i will do that but i have to keep in mind that i have enough of the wood grain because i might need to use it on my cover a little bit so i'm inking this lightly with antique linen And especially on these small pieces there where there's not a lot going on it's basically a piece of white cardstock it gives, a, it gives that little bit of detail on there okay shall we just glue that down i feel that this piece could have been a little longer oh well okay my glue And I know the edges are probably hard to see on camera where my pockets are. But I'm evening out the border like always. Sometimes with these small pieces I don't use my own folder. But I try to do it no matter the size of the piece. To even out the glue behind the cardstock. I don't want to be seeing any glue lines or anything through my paper once the glue dries. That's my main reason for it, so I'm just centering this a little bit more. So the gap is a little bit big to my liking between my pattern and paper pieces. I would rather have cut it slightly larger, so we really had like a small border in between here. So I actually, what I, I feel like, I cut it to two and a half instead of the two and five eighths. I will remeasure. Because I said I was going to cut it bigger and I think I didn't. Yes, that's exactly what I did. I said I needed to cut it to two and five eighths, but I cut it to two and a half. So if you cut it to two and five eighths, then you uh, did a better job than I did. That happens sometimes, right? I can really make a big fuss out of it, but. So I'm not using any magnets on this flap, like I said, I'm going to use some elements in the small pockets to keep it all closed. Especially with the large pieces, I try to rub out the air underneath. Okay. So for this inside, I'm going to start cutting into this pattern. But like I said in the previous video, I might want to use some of this. So I'm going to cut that off first. So this is what I cut off for using for other things. I'm going to cut off the little branding strip. Oh, we'll see how it goes. <coughs> so for these pockets, these pockets are in total height of two and three quarters. But if I measure up to the edge of my first pocket here, that is one and a half inches. So what I will do most of the time is cut it to about one and three quarters, go in the pocket a little bit, not too far. 
and that will cover enough. So that saves you on pattern paper. Now there are a few things that we can do here. You can cut pieces to the same width as you cut your small pieces and you will slide them in the pocket. So if this would have been a piece of pattern paper, you slide that in the pocket and you will have your edges again the same as here. Now what I want to do is keep this uh, really obvious that it's three, two, one. So I'm going to cut it to the width of my second layer of pockets, which is four inches. So I will cut it to three and three quarters by what I just said, one and three quarters. So I'm going to cut a strip one and three quarters from this large sheet here and to three and three quarters. And I need two of those pieces, so I will cut them right away. And then I have a little scrap piece there. So this, I cannot slide this in the pocket now, right? So I need to do a little extra step for it. So the easy way is to cut it to the same size as the three, um, three pockets. And again, I feel that I should have cut this bigger. What am I doing? Okay, I'm going to cut a new strip because I'm not happy. That's better. I just cut it to three and seven eighths. Yeah, I like that better. Okay, so what am I doing on this piece is I'm laying it down where I want it from side to side. And I'm marking on here where those two pockets of the first layer come together where that edge is and I'm just going to take a little snip scissors and I'm going to cut on both sides of that little mark so I create about a 1 8 inch gap and I go in about 1 8 of an inch just cut that out I hope you can see that and then I will give it a dry fit maybe I need to adjust something it's a little bit difficult to get it in place probably. So I need to cut it up a little higher. That's because my piece of cardstock is somewhat higher. Sometimes I cut it a little smaller to size. So we'll see, we just go in steps. I don't want to cut it too much in one go. I probably need to go a little deeper than this. But I can always cut down more. I don't want to have a big gap there, right? So I need a little bit more. And I'm just eyeballing it now. You can of course measure it all out, use a ruler. And like I said, it can be a little bit tricky to slide it in the pocket because you need to go over your attachment strips and that can be a little bit of a pain in the you know where to get it to slide in there the way you want it. Also my pockets, like I said, they are a little bit crooked. So that probably is not helping it either. It's really not want to go in there. There we go. There we go. Okay, that's not bad. I'm going to leave it just like this. I have a little bit of a small gap here on top. I'm not sure if I can show you that. But that's fine with me. Okay, so the same thing here. I line it up from side to side where I want it and I mark where that where those pockets come together and on both sides from that I need to cut and I'm yeah I need to take it out anyway so I'm using this as a little bit of a guideline on how high I need to go again I'm being a little bit on the safe side with it I can always cut it a little further if I need to Give it a dry fit and probably cut it a little bit more. 
slightly more, slightly more. I really want this to have a dry fit so that I'm sure that I'm happy with what I did before I start adding glue. Okay, yep, that's gonna work. So that's a little bit of fiddling around if you wanna do this, but I think it's definitely worth it. But you don't have to. And I'm pretty um, confident that this is gonna look good from the outside. So you don't really have to ink this bottom part, but I'm trying to ink that little thing there, but it's hard to reach. Okay, let's just start with one. I'm not going to put the glue too far to the bottom. It's just gonna help me a little bit with sliding it in. And I don't really have to worry about that not being stuck down properly. So I'm just adding it mostly towards the top part there. Now let's fiddle around a little more to get this in. Who knows, I might be surprised and it will just go. Nice. Maybe I trained it a little bit to go where I wanted it. <laughs> but don't get stressed out or panicked if you're not getting it in there. Just try to stay calm. <laughs> Next one. But so, because there's no glue on that bottom part, I'm, I'm not too stressed out about it. Because I know that's not gonna stick before I'm ready for it to stick. Yes, there we go in. Maybe I wanna place this here so I can see my edge a little better, but try to line it up with that piece. Nice. See, so we keep that three two and then we can do one large piece there but we're gonna find something to put there we have several options like i have this scrap piece here that i might want to place here on the top and have a little photo opportunity there again i would add some layers to it but um, do i have a three and a half by five close by with some black edges would that fit? No, probably not. I can fit it in landscape. But I also need to add some pink behind it. So we'll see what photo size, but this can be nice to use here. That's a nice scrap piece that we have. Uh, of course, I really love that big flower pattern. This one that I would like to use, but I think I'm going to use it maybe on some photo mats or something. And let's see, I think this is our best option to go there. I like that. Where's the other half of that sheet actually? Okay, so I might want to use this on the inside here a little bit. You cannot make that fit in one piece, right? I don't want to cut into that lizard. I don't know what it's called, I'm sorry. Let me go cut this to size. What was that? Four and a half. Yes. Oh. For a second there, I thought my magnet wasn't holding very well. Okay, so we can use that there. Can also just use this strip here. You don't have to cut into a new piece. Now the question is, do I like that? I also have this with the um, uh, Australia outline and some of the flowers, and I can just make that in one piece, so we don't have too much different patterns going on, because I cannot make this work with another scrap, scrap piece to have that in there as well and I don't want to have too much different patterns in there 
I don't want to do this because I might want to use it on something. If I can still make that work after my cutting mistake. So I think this is my best way to go. Yep. Okay, so let's do some measuring. Of course I need it to be 8, but I'm going to measure this. is 2 until the top of my pocket, so I'm going to cut that to... I want to have it continuous, so I'm cutting it to 2 and 1 eighth of an inch, a strip. And this one needs to be... I can cut that to 1 and 3 quarters. Okay, and both need to be 8. I just need to make sure that I cut my piece off on the same side. So in order for my pattern to continue, I cut both my pieces off on the same side of my, oh you cannot see that, on the same side of my strip. So that all works out. For this I need to do the same thing as I just did with my other pieces. I need to cut that little slit in there. So again I'm just marking where those two pockets come together. Cut about a wedge of about a one eighth of an inch. I'm calling it a wedge, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. But I hope you get the point. to go a little deeper or higher up with my wedge I could also use my craft knife for this right I'm doing it with my scissors the whole time but this is not a craft knife this is and just cut that little piece in between out Okay, I might want to go slightly higher up. That edge is comparing to the rest a little bit on the thin side. See, so I just, I read it just cut three times, then ending up with a way too high up wedge and seeing that ugly part there. I see it here a little bit. That's better. There we go. So we can ink this. And then we have this. Oh, I don't want to have too much glue there. Let's remove that a little bit. To make my life easier. Okay, try to line it up nicely. That went in pretty easy. So here for these pieces I will also just ink three sides basically. That's what I do. Just makes it a little easier to slide it in the pocket. What a beautiful piece of pattern paper there, right? And I just, just go to glue that down. What a shame. But we needed something a little calmer here. Okay, it's straight. It's continuous, so that's nice. And then finally this part here on the flap and we will add some photo opportunity there. I'm not going to be worried about the bulk in this case. I feel that I left 
quite some space in this project to create some bulk on both sides. Um, but if you need more room, because you're a heavy embellisher, you can just increase your spines. All right, just add to the spines. I always um, intend to make my projects with thinner spines. I just feel that it looks prettier and it's a little bit more um, easy to handle, functional, than like the really big spines. I don't, you will not see me make really, really big spines. I will always try to stay under three inches, but you will hardly ever see me go up to three inches. I think more like two and a half. Yes, you will see two and a half, but anything above that you won't see me do often and definitely not above three inches. So that's our base pattern paper on. That looks nice, right? Oh, I'm not sure if this is completely in frame, but I really love how that turned out here, where that wood grain is basically giving us a returning focal point to break up the patterns and give some contrast and color although it's brown grayish brown and then when we open this up we have this right here so we can make <coughs> photo mats to go on in here i can definitely use these cards if i'm not using it in the front cover to go on photo mats or journal opportunities in here um, i have some larger ones that i already cut out because i might use it on the cover to make photo mats, so I will definitely be using those. And uh, what else did I want to show you is these that come in the paper collection as fuzzy cut elements. So if you have a cutting machine, you can really use a cutting machine on these because they all have a really nice outline. Uh, but I've prepared one. So let's see if we can put that one together and we can fit that in a pocket here. There are also some tags in this collection and then also different sizes. I'm just showing you so, so you can combine some stuff together to create a fun tag to go in here. Uh, that's That would be really nice. But let's see if we can uh, put this together. So I'm going to get my scoreboard. Let's see if I can get my small one. Well, I had to go look for it because I hardly ever use it. Because most of the time my projects are too big for it. Okay, so there are some lines on here that we need to score. So I'm just going to line that up somewhere in my scoreboard on a score grid and just score on the line and do the same thing on this side. So we need to move it slightly. And I cut this completely by hand, like I said, so also this, but maybe if you have a circle punch, you can make that work for yourself. And then this line is going to be probably going to be the hardest because I cannot really line that up on top. I need to eyeball it, but that looks pretty good. So we score those three sides. And let's just fold on them. Okay, now let's see. Yep, that's what I thought. So here, when I fold this in, that will go slightly over the fold line that I've made here. So in order to not have that interfere with each other, I am just slightly going to give that a little bit of an angle there. And really slightly, maybe I want to redo that rounding a little bit, but you know what, that's going to end up in the back. So I try not to worry about that too much. Okay, let's see if I fold it now. That's better, okay. So that's how we can fix that pretty easy. So I'm going to pre-burnish this a little bit. And we need to stick this together. So I'm going to get some quarter inch tape. Bring that along the edge here. And I will also bring it along. So here I did it on the outside and then here I'm going to do it on the inside. 
along this edge. So both edges have a nice stick. And we also need it here, but I'm not sure if my quarter inch tape will fit. Oh yeah, that will fit. It just fits. So some over there as well. Again, give that a burnish. And we've pre-folded everything, so it should be fine by just removing these tape backings. And stick it down. And stick this down. Now I could have inked these edges a little bit. But I think this is just fine. And then we can put a tag in here or something. So that's a really nice pocket that you only have to cut out and do some scoring. And you have a really fun element or journal spot to go in here. And I can really place this here. The only downfall is that it's the same image. So I'm not sure if I would like that. I'm not saying that I won't use it because of it. But I will probably go for this one. But then again, this is all the same image as I have over here. So <laughs> we'll see what I end up doing. I can also put it in here, you know, but it's, it might, it fits in there, but I think I will do some tags to go in the small pockets, but just to show you, there are two of those in the collection. And I like that. That's just something fun, something different that you can add really easy. And I think I do want to give this a little bit of pink just to Brighten that up. You can also embellish this a little bit more, but then it won't fit in your pocket as easily, I think, I guess. So maybe I should have inked this beforehand, but I can still do it. Okay, I might ink that a little bit more later on, but so just to give you an example of what's possible with this collection. That's nice. Now let's go to a waterfall a little bit more. Okay, so we're going to go to the waterfall, but actually I want to work on this part a little bit first before I finish that off. Now I want to keep this clean, uh, but I want to cover up the magnets here a little bit. And I was actually planning on using this as a background, but because I messed up cutting earlier, um, it's too small, right? But this is, I have one of those six by four cards that were in the collection. I wanted to use that for a background for these cards here, um, but that's not gonna fit. Um, so I was thinking like, how can I solve that? I can do something like this, where it just sticks out a little bit on this side. And I just want to keep in mind that when I close it, I only see the pink. I don't see any pattern paper. I could also do that to the other side. But for some reason, I would like that better this way. So that's a really good option to just cut it to height and have that make a border uh, just a little bit and ink this. Um, that would give me two layers of cardstock between my magnets. But given that a dry fit here, that would still hold. And you can journal on this a little bit if you'd like to. Um, my other option is, is to use these scrap pieces. Place one here in the corner next to the magnet. So I'm also taking away one layer of that uh, between my magnets. And I just add something like this. That can also work. But I think I like the other option better. So uh, this piece is six, my cover is six and three eighths. I think I'm going to cut it to uh, six and a quarter, see if I can make that work. So I'm going to cut this to height at six and a quarter. Let's see how that fits. Okay, I just want to have a little bit more height here on the cover. And then if I would do something like that, give that some ink. When we close it, we don't see it. That's going to be it. Simple. And just made it work even though I kind of messed up a little bit. I, w I still was in doubt if I was going to have these sink in, but I'm not going to take the trouble. It's fine. Okay, I inked this a little heavier to give it a little bit more. So my other options, well this one 
was going to be too long to place it here. It's going to stick out, which is unfortunate because I really like it, but I will use it on a photo mat. Um, because I already used these the images of these birds, right? The other one was this one, but I just feel that it's just a little too too empty on one side for this. So that's why I'm going with this one. Okay, so let's do this quickly. I hope. Okay, some glue on here. Okay, so I uh, put some tape in the other direction, put some wet glue on it. I've put glue on this. And then we can stick that down. Now, this is a different pattern size, right? But that's not bothering me too much. I'm gonna go a little closer to the edge so I can um, see quite some of it, try to find my bone folder, do the edges and the corners, and then again try to find my magnets, so where my fingers are, that's where my magnets are, and I try not to go too close to that point with my bone folder. I might go a little on top of it, but you know that's fine. So I can feel that the magnets are there. I can see it if I'm going to look for it, but I don't have that. If you really burnish around it, then yeah, I don't really like how that looks. Okay, you can glue this into a pocket if you want to. Um, oh, that's the wrong one. So you could glue it on three sides only, or maybe you want to glue this three sides down. So there is a little pocket here, so you can put something in. But again, remember that that might uh, affect your strength of the magnets right but yeah you could definitely do i have another three by four yeah definitely try to see if you can make some, another photo opportunity here from this have some things go behind it or maybe a tag or shall we just try it see what we get i don't i'm really doubting like do i want to do this on a little bit of pink but I don't. Okay, so um, because I really want to prevent it sticking out here, I could also do it where it's open here. How much room do I have? So I have up to here. So maybe we want to do it on this side. Glue it here. Okay, so this side, no glue. At least it gives me the opportunity to do it. And if I would glue it down, then I don't no longer have that opportunity, right? Do something like this. And if you do something like this, definitely use wet glue. If you use double-sided tape, then your photo mats might um, catch onto it, stick on it. It's hard to get them out. Now the only thing is that if I want to put something in here, I'm going to bump up against the edge of the pattern paper underneath it. Now we could have prevented that by putting some of that scotch tape over it. Just not from top to bottom, but in that middle part a little bit. But yeah, it works. But that might be a little bit of an issue. So that gives us the opportunity to put something under it if, if I want to do that. And otherwise I might just glue it down later on. Okay, that's nice. That's fine. Okay, so I will be using this for now. The waterfall, we need to do the inside and I need some strips here now. This is all too short, right? This is also going to be too short now. Yeah. That would have been nice if we could have used that, but it's not gonna work. Okay, let's see what we can cut on pattern paper. I keep moving that frame and keep 
getting it back in and moving it out again. Okay, so I feel like I'm gonna use this, some of this double sided. So if I wanted to use this, and I would probably need to do another portrait style photo. I can do that. We can do something like that, that can be fun. But I would do that a little bit further away because I have this image here. So I might do that somewhere here. So let's cut that. Okay, so what would I need in width? So let's do it next to the ones where I did smaller photos. I should know it by now, but I don't. Five. It's five and a quarter, so I'm going to cut it to five. So here I'm just going to cover up the whole flap. I won't be doing that for every flap because that would be too much bulk. But I can add this here. I could even use this little piece that I've cut off from it to cover this part. Probably I can make that work. Okay, so let me get some pink if I know where I put it. Okay, some scrap pieces of the pink. Let's see. I think this is basically perfect. So I need to cut it down here to have a little bit of a border around my whites. See, so but this this gives extra layers, right? Now, if I do that with this photo size, I will be losing quite a lot of that image there. So let's see if I can cut something for a three by four and what we get then. So all of this looks pretty white now, right? But that would be a photo. I think this is a better size. But then the question is, do you want to do that right here where you only have the smaller photos? Why not? So I would keep this safe. Then for here, I would need a strip 3 eighths of an inch. And, okay, two times 3 eighths of an inch. Let's see if I can make that work from this little part here. Now this is really small, so I would have had some washi tape, then I would use that to keep it in place. I'm kind of thinking, do I have it? I don't think so. I think that was not too bad. Okay, we can make that work. So that's how we can use scrap pieces on those parts. Pretty easy. Let's put that together. So I have a little bit more space here but that's okay with placing photos you can even that out on both sides so i'm just gonna go for a nice border on the folded edge there So for finishing off this waterfall, I'm not really particular in, oh, I need to start at the beginning and work my way in. I'm just going to find parts and use it where I like it and then make sure that we covered everything. So just do my lines on here. That just breaks up the white a little bit for now.
my removable or repositionable glue. I need to cover it a little bit more with this one. And I think it's partially because of the <coughs> cardstock that's structured that it's not sticking so well. And then I can just decide like do I want to have it here and then um, I also have some more birds that I can cut out so I can add another bird here or maybe even here or one of the other ones. So I'm, I will be looking at that as well, but I still have to do a lot of fuzzy cutting and I don't want to do that on camera because that's going to be really boring. But I might be using this one here. So with that in mind, I keep my placement in mind, but I think this is a nice placement. Just somewhat centered, a little bit more away from this edge, so we keep that image there. About half an inch from this side. Something like that. I might throw this in here that I know that I want to use it, but I, I think I will be fine. I know that I want to use it there. Okay, so we have that. Embellishing, we'll be, be doing that later. Now I was also thinking that the image here with the nice outline of Australia, I might be able to that here but I might need to do a little strip there to break that up but uh, let me close my glue I'm not sure if I have more of the wood grain that I can use I think I might have a little piece of this part here of that six by six piece the question is where in between all these pieces of paper just a small strip probably but then you will get strip strip so that's something to keep in mind um, do one large photo here and just fill in the rest with pattern and paper Or go from this side, put a photo here, and fill this in with pattern and paper. Maybe that's better. And I can always do, this is a 3x4, but I can also do even a 2x3 for some journaling over here to break that up a little bit. Uh, I like that. The question is... Do I need to break this up slightly? And then have a photo here, maybe frame it here a little bit on this side. I'm telling you, yes, these videos are long, but for my doing, I'm going pretty quick. With my decision making here. Okay, so keep it close. I'm gonna start on this side again. That's a little dangerous because I need to line everything up nicely. Um, but I'm going to do my best. I can use something. Uh, I would need to do that right here to help me line up with the piece that's already here. So I can use that as a guideline. Put some ink on here. Now I'm also thinking, I'm going to show you quickly with this strip, something that I could have done, but I'm not sure if it looks good. Right here on this cover part here, we could have made this edge a little stronger with a strip of this. 
then I would have to lift it up a little bit. But that's something that I might still go back and do, but yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not even sure if I'm going to keep this as a pocket. Okay, let's stay focused on this part here. I'm not really staying that one eighth of an inch away from my border, from my edge. More and more I feel that that's just a little bit too much. But then again with this beautiful color background. It can be nice to see a little bit more of the color. Okay, so now let's measure. I hope I'm not going to cut through any heads of these animals. They're not really big on here, but still. My ruler, once again, where is my ruler? It always ends up under my papers. Four and seven eighths. So I'm going to do just a little bit under four and three quarters to be on the safe side. So from this side. Okay, then I have the scrappies here and I'm going to do, uh, let me, let me glue this one down. Do I want to have some brown there? That was what I was questioning myself about. Let's see if I have a quarter inch. Let's place it upside down. I probably need to redo my glue there in a second. Uh, where's my piece here? I will end up a little bit on the short side there, right? I think that I might need to um, cut my photo down even a little bit. I'm not using the brown because if I do that, I need to cut straight through the koala on this image and I don't want that. Now I have one inch. Again, I still need to cut a little bit in it. So that's why I'm thinking I might want to cut my photo mat down a little bit. And just crop the photo. I think that's what I'm gonna do. So I need another six by four. Uh, because I cannot make this. I feel that I might have done that differently. Like first place my photo mat, then measure and cut it from this side and then cut up to here because I have a little bit more room to play there, right? So I should have probably uh, go at that a little bit in a different way. But sure, I'm going to stick this down. So you can learn from my mistakes, or no real mistakes, right? We'll work around it. And also, if I hadn't done this strip here, there would also be a little less going on here. But sometimes I just like that for contrasts and breaking some patterns up. Okay, I'm going to glue this one down and then I can measure to what I need to cut my photo mat down. So there I need to crop a photo. I always try to prevent Cropping photos, well not always, but most of the time I will try to prevent it. But yeah, sometimes it works out a little different. Okay, 
Ooh, that could be nice. You see, I have the three and a half by five here. Sometimes you just get a little idea. Well, this is, it is putting stuff together a little bit, but if you don't mind doing that, you kind of frame a photo mat there. Or I could even, but I don't want the photo to end up, no, that's too short. I knew that actually. I can try. Let's see what it, what it looks like. I have these scrap pieces anyway, right? So I would need half an inch, two strips, half an inch by three and a half. Okay, I might need to cut it a hair under half an inch to make it fit. So let's try that again. So a little thinner strips this time, just a hair under half an inch. So I can line it up here and here and have a little bit of space in between. That's better. Maybe not exactly what I was going for. But it works and it's a good good way to use up some scraps. Already tried. And with a little embellishment I can break that up a little bit if I want to. I'm glad I'm think thought of it to try the three and a half by five. It fits almost perfectly. So try to line it up with the bottom of the pieces that are already there and even out the space between them. So that's one. And then I'm going to do my photo mat. I can always move that up or down a little bit if I need to, but it's for lining up the edges. Some blue on this one. And again, lining it up with the top cut edge of the pieces there. See my gap in between my pieces here is a little bit bigger than here. That's because something is not straight. But we try to even it out as best as we can. And then probably with something like a nice flower, um, break that up a little bit. Embellishment there. Is all of this stuck down? Yeah. So I will probably do a little journal spot here. Um, is this a nice size? I think it is. Let's cut that to three. Okay, so a piece of white that's two by three and then a piece of pink that's slightly larger. And I can place that here. For example, for some journaling. I can also place it in the other direction. I think I want to do it in that way. Yep. Let's go stick that down.
Okay, so we just need some embellishments right here. Uh, but what I will do with this, um, the rest of this waterfall is I'm going to fill it up with photos and I'm going to use, well, I've already cut into this sheet that we used at the pocket. So that's something that I can use really nice to fill up some areas. My And of course the six by six parts that I still have. So for the other ones, I will probably create photo opportunities. This is really good to use for a landscape photo. So that's probably going to go in there. Uh, so I will finish that off uh, off camera, I guess. And then we will do one more video where we are going to do some uh, of the embellishments and uh, hopefully also the front cover. So I hope that you're still hanging in there with me, that you are enjoying the process of creating this project here. That's turning out pretty beautiful. And um, yeah, for now, I want to say thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of the day and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.